Hello everyone, Lipnox VR here, and I just got a brand new virtual assistant for the computer. And believe me, I'm excited about it. We're just installing it now. And uh, I wanted to get it to clean up some of the storage space on my computer. You know, editing videos is such a pain. Oh, looks like it's uh, looks like it's booting up. Hello, virtual assistant. Hello, Adam. Can you find to see if there's any old files I can delete for me? Thank you. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this new virtual assistant. It should help with the channel a lot. Oh, what, what's that? You found a folder? Uh, what's it called? Good dog, bad dog. Good dog, bad dog. I haven't thought of that game. Well, I think about that game all the time. It always seems to come pulled back to my head. As it was the first review that I did, saw the trailer online, I, you know, had, had my laugh found the developer's website, which looked very questionable, and figured, hey, it doesn't hurt to try to ask for a key, and I got one. Did my stream, did my review, and that's that, but you know what? Given it was such an old video, I really wasn't happy with the quality, and I didn't want to feel like I was misleading anyone, so I figured, we gotta re-review re this, and with the new price drop, or at least sale price, now is a better time than ever. So. Good Dog, Bad Dog. Re-review. The sequel that no one asked for. It's time to repeat history. Oh dear. It's time to experience it again. Please no. May the PSVR gods have mercy on my soul. They won't. This is Good Dog, Bad Dog. Re-review. Let's do this. Whatever. So before we get into the game, let's talk about some backstory. Good Dog, Bad Dog is also the name of a TV show I watched briefly as a kid, and sadly, no, there is no relation from that TV show to this game. It was a show that featured a similar family to the Griffins, oddly enough, and had episodes about a dog getting in trouble, and the dog would go all limp if someone said bad dog, and wouldn't come back to normal until you said good dog. Usually the dog is actually helping, and some random person doesn't understand how the dog is helping, and you get it. The idea is pretty well recycled into every episode. It's a silly and dumb show, but it was the initial reason the game that we're talking about today initially sparked curiosity for me. I was given a review copy of the game, and going beyond that I have spoken with the developer several times after the game has come out about updates and game mechanics. There is no denying at its original price tag that the content in this title is not justified, but today for my re-review I wanted to look at it from the perspective of the sale price and see if anyone should own Good Dog Bad Dog on PS4 for $5. And I wanted to sneak this in, but it does have a platinum trophy. The game is set up almost exactly like the classic Tony Hawk games, except instead of tricks, you have Good Dog or Bad Dog actions. Or Karma, I should say. You can even combo these actions together to max out the score, and unfortunately where Tony Hawk had a bunch of levels, Good Dog Bad Dog has one level which for me is the biggest issue I had in relation to the price tag, as I really feel there should have been more levels, or at least variations of the initial level, maybe a nighttime version or something. Graphically, while it does look crisp on my regular PS4 with PSVR, it does not look good in flat screen mode, so it's harder to recommend if you're only playing in flat screen, but again, $5 isn't a huge investment. Moving on to the gameplay side of things, it's a high score challenge, like Tony Hawk which I just mentioned, with the timed aspect but this is a 15 minute timer, which seems a little extensive for a high score, so for myself I was more about roaming around the town, finding hidden collectibles, and generally just seeing what happens when I try to do certain actions. The controls are a little complex though, I played with the move controllers myself, but it does support the standard DualShock 4 as well. It throws tons of commands your way, and you will rarely remember what most of them do. Yes, there is a list of controls in the pause menu, and if you look at your controller in game, so it's not really an issue, but it might annoy you a bit. There is also the aspect of being locked to the leash, which slows you down if you're trying to search the level for butterflies. You can get off the leash with the added threat of the animal control sending you back to your house, so you do need to be extra cautious while doing this. I also will mention you can teleport away too, which at times can kind of break the game letting you traverse the level extremely quickly, spamming the teleport. Also forgot to mention, but the music isn't great. I personally recommend turning it off, as that gives you a more immersive experience regardless, and perhaps if you have Spotify, find some good ambience noise of your choosing. 
it may not bother you, but I know for me, the second I started actually listening to it, the time until I was sick of it was not long. Even after the update adding more variation to it. But Good Dog Bad Dog is not entirely lost, because while I had some levels of fun in exploring and seeing what happens when I do stuff, breaking plates, just playing around with it and trying to collect everything, when I threw my kid into the game on flat screen mode, he loved it. And I think that is where Good Dog Bad Dog sits now. It's a bad game that gives you just enough freedom to be silly that for kids is actually fun, or for older players who can get enjoyment from this kind of stuff. When taken from the perspective of a kid's game, the value is definitely there at $5. In my experience, it could be the best game or the worst, and kids will make their own fun with the experiences that give them the freedom to do so. I shamefully admit when I was a kid and first got Ocarina of Time, I spent the first couple hours just breaking rocks and rolling in the grass, then spending the money on DQ sticks, breaking them and repeating the process further because it was fun for me, and I wasn't aware I could crawl to go get the sword to progress further. Now even as a kids game, I admit this title is still pretty bare bones, but for $5 and given the way kids play these games, I think a kid could spend an hour or two playing the game and love it. Laughing at how silly you can make the dog act, eating inappropriate things, going to the washroom on people, attacking the cat. It's not a game to ever be taken seriously, and that was apparent from the start watching the very first trailer. Good dog, bad dog for $5 might be worth it if you have a young one who's interested in games. Might be worth it if you're into quirky weird games. I expect no major updates to this game, but the developer has mentioned it is a possibility if by some random chance this game takes off in popularity. I will mention it has had several updates this year since the original North American release date, adding more variation to the music, introducing the combo system, some bug tweaks, and if memory serves me correctly, to give the humans real voices. Good Dog Bad Dog is something I can't logically justify or recommend, but for $5 you could totally enjoy your investment, and if the sale is over, and you're still interested, just go into it knowing what it is. It's Good Dog Bad Dog, a silly sandbox experience where you play as a dog in VR, and the majority of the content can be seen in 20 minutes. Wrapping back to the TV show that's all but lost to time, if you search just hard enough, you can find episodes online, and for me, sometimes being a kid again, even if just for a 20 minute runtime of an episode, is something therapeutic and fun that brings me back to being a kid, and Good Dog Bad Dog replicates that same kind of silly guilty pleasure. If you would like more info on the game, I got some additional info on how combos work from the developer. My new assistant will read that out, but I think I've talked enough about this game. Hey guys, here it is. Thanks to the developer Brad from PlayM for the information. The combo system works when you do a series of three actions in sequence, and they can be alternating. Such as sit, wagtail, fetch or sit, paw, sit or bite, bark, off leash to name a few. There are 32 good combos and 24 bad ones, but a lot of them are just different sequences of the same actions. You have to be careful not to interrupt the sequence you want to do otherwise it won't trigger. Maybe turning off the MIC for bark might be a good idea since a misplaced bark can ruin a combo. It will multiply the score, good or bad depending on the sequence, by 5. So you can rack up scores that way instead of the repeated actions like before. It takes a bit more work, but it is overall more satisfying to try to find all the combos you can get. I wish I would have created this system before and made a trophy for it, as it would have been one more thing to do. The actions that you can do for combos are Good actions, sit, wag tail, fetch, paw. Bad actions, bite, bark, off leash, poop, pee. The off leash one has no poop or pee combos, just biting and barking. Oh well thank you assistant person, we really need a name for her. You're welcome Adam. So, thank you guys for watching. If you really, really love Good Dog, Bad Dog, and I mean, if you're still here, you, you might be that kind of person. Well, if for whatever reason you want more, I've decided to un put all the videos that I put private before unlisted, and they're all going to be in the description of this one. So come here first, then go to those places, then I don't feel like I'm misleading anyone. And if you want to watch the videos, there they are. Thanks for watching, everyone. This is a good dog, bad dog day, and I'm out of here.